this is Ralph Martin from RJ Quality Consulting, and in this video, I want to talk about how you can become accredited to ISO 17025, a step-by-step -step guide and video walkthrough. I actually cut a video a few weeks back, um, and I did get a lot of feedback from a lot of my followers and readers, and um, I kind of wanted to uh, update this video. Um, and give you a step-by-step -step guide and more resources if you would like to get your laboratory ready for a ISO 17025 assessment or if you're looking to get ready for a um, audit from an accreditation body to the ISO IEC 17025 2017 version of the standard. As many of you know, um, I am a certified ISO 17025 assessor. I, so I do know a thing or two about ISO 17025. And um, after I wrote this article uh, that you see on, on my blog here, um, I went ahead and I have been working with a lot of clients, helping them get accredited. And I've been creating quality manuals and procedures and all of that to meet all the requirements of the standard. And then um, decided to really create templates for any laboratory to use. So um, first of all, what I'd like to do is just kind of review uh, what an accreditation step-by-step -step process would look like, um, what you would need to do. So first of all, in this um, video, if you click on the link below the video, you can go ahead and read this article that I have outlined, which is really a step-by-step -step guide on what you need to do to become accredited to ISO 17025. Um, and, I, and I also published a video, which many of you probably have watched. But the 10-step process to achieve 17025 accreditation, um, I broke down, uh, first of all, the standard itself is broken into two major sections, the management side of the standard and the technical side of the standard. Um, sections 4, 5, and 8 of the standard are really the management requirements, and then sections 6 and 7 focus on the ISO 17025 technical requirements. Uh, if you've ever gone through the standard, you'll, you'll see what I mean about that. So the first thing you're, you're going to want to do is develop and implement a quality management system. And I recommend, even though a quality manual is not required technically, it's a good idea to have one because they're all, it's a great place to house and document required policies that ISO 17025 requires, such as an impartiality policy, a confidentiality policy, a quality policy, and quality objectives. These are things you want that you have to have, but it's good to house them within a quality manual. Uh, one thing about a quality manual that I highly, highly, highly recommend is that it has the same clause structure as the ISO 17025 standard itself. So, for example, Section 4.1 of the standard deals with impartiality. Therefore, your quality manual, Section 4.1, should also deal with impartiality. This makes it easier for laboratory personnel to understand how their management system meets the requirements of the standard. It is also good for your external auditor to look at your quality manual and see where you meet the requirements that he's going to audit you to because their checklists are literally clause by clause of the uh, ISO 17025 standard. So section 4.1, impartiality, section 4.2, the confidentiality policy, quality policy and objectives are usually put into the management side of section 8. And then also there are required procedures that ISO 17025 requires. And you can look at, for example, in section 6.2.5 of the standard, you'll see there's verbiage such as the laboratory shall have a procedure for dot, 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 in this case, uh, personnel or training. Um, and that procedure shall include A through H. That's the kind of verbiage you'll see in the standard. Well, there are there is that type of verbiage in each of these sections that you see. So the standard requires these procedures. So uh, in order to become accredited, number one, create a quality manual that has the same clause structure of the standard. 
and then create these required procedures, have a good document control system, have a good non-conformance and corrective action system, and uh, a good training program. Um, then as, as you go further down this article, then the next thing you'd want to do is conduct an internal audit or gap analysis. You'll need those records for the auditor because they do require that you conduct an internal audit before they actually come out and audit you and they do want to see those records. Then you would identify your gaps, create uh, corrective actions, develop your proficiency testing plan which is a four-year plan. That's a requirement in Section 7.7 of the standard. Then you would want to conduct a management review, and then you're ready to schedule and prepare your audit, and then uh, go ahead, and then you would need to maintain your accreditation by having continual internal audits and that sort of thing. So the, the, uh, that's a lot of work. So what I have developed is a template for a quality manual along with all of the procedures. And what I'd like to do is quickly show you what that looks like. So here is uh, the quality manual. It's a 56 page document that has all the requirements of ISO 17025 that you can customize and add your, like for example, your laboratory name here, uh, your address and contact information, a document number ID, like maybe the first three letters of your lab name, followed by QM-001 would be a good document ID, your revision number, the effective date, uh, the laboratory director, whoever approved it, quality manager's name and title, and then your company logo, followed by a table of contents that shows all of the uh, clause elements of the standard. As you see, this quality manual is aligned with the, the 17025 standard itself. Uh, 4.1 impartiality, 4.2 confidentiality, uh, structural requirements, section 5. So this is the table of contents. Then you get into the meat of it. And what's really cool is under each section, I've identified a policy or procedure that it would be associated with. For example, Laboratory activities are done impartially. Laboratory name, whatever your name is, ensures that all laboratory activities uh, are conducted impartially. And then it literally goes through every clause element of the standard. And then it tells you that um, there is an impartiality agreement because the auditor is going to want to see objective evidence that you actually have an impartiality agreement and then employees have signed it. So this points to that document. That's your objective evidence. Um, and we go along, uh, for example, I'm going to get into the first required procedure, which is uh, a training procedure. And you'll notice here that when you get into the requirement for where the standard says you shall have a procedure, uh, we go ahead and we uh, the laboratory has a documented procedure. So the standard says in section 6.2.5, the laboratory shall have a documented procedure. Here we're saying the laboratory has a documented personnel competence training procedure, and it ensures all of these things which are required from the standard. So we go through that for every section of the standard where there is a corresponding uh, procedure that this document points to. Um, and then, it, literally, this is every clause element of the standard. If you implement this quality manual, you will meet all the requirements of the standard. But what's really cool is if you go down to the appendix, I have an appendix that is really a uh, master document list, if you will. So, for example, if I go down to uh, Appendix A, this is a list of reference documents and procedures. Impartiality agreement, confidentiality policy for employees, confidentiality policy for contractors, personnel competence and training. These are all of the procedures that were referenced from the above that I just showed you examples of. Um, there are about 15 of these policies and procedures. So 
how much, right? So you can get the complete quality manual. I mean, everything, all 56 pages of this for $49. Um, most companies charge anywhere between $150 to $200 for a quality manual template. This is state of the art. This was done by a certified uh, auditor, myself. Um, I am a certified ISO 17025 auditor. I know what the uh, your accreditation body is looking for because I am the one who audits you, uh, guys like me. So the other thing is, if you want to take my one-time upgrade offer for another $49, I will give you every single one of these policies and procedures. The exciting part is these procedures aren't just procedures. Each of these procedures has an appendices that is the corresponding form or document you need to fill out in order to show objective evidence. And I'll kind of show you an example of that. Um, like, for example, let's go to the non-conforming work procedure as just an example. I do this to every single one of the procedures. So you have, you know, you just insert your information. It's very easy to modify. Um, it has a scope statement for the procedure, uh, references, definitions, the responsibility section, and then the actual procedure on what you should do. And then it literally will point out, you know, how to record the nonconformance in Appendix 1, right? And then um, if it turns into a disposition of nonconforming work, what you need to do to disposition it. And then the appendix would actually be a non-conforming work register. You could use this document as is, or if you find it ugly and you don't like the way it's formatted, you can always take the exact same structure, put it into Excel, make it pretty, whatever you want to do. Um, this may not be pretty, but it meets the requirements of the standard if you um, actually document your uh, non-conformities in, in a system like this. And then we have a non-conforming work form for individual non-conformities, because you do have to document those. The auditors don't want to see that. Um, you could use this form the way it is, or modify it, make it pretty, do whatever you want to do. And then, of course, there's a revision history. I do this for every single one of these policies and procedures, and there, there are about 15 of them. But if you, and that's an additional $49, if you get the whole package, um, take the upgrade when you purchase the quality manual. You will have everything you need to meet the requirements for ISO 17025 and be audit ready. Also, there is an internal audit procedure in here that has my internal audit checklist, which you could do a gap analysis for. And then when you do your management review, I provide you a management review template and if you follow that template, you will meet all the requirements for conducting a, 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 a appropriate management review that meets all of the input and output requirements. So um, I get you completely ready, and then you'll have 100% email support from me as well. So, um, you know, that being said, what you want to do is click on the link provided in this video, and what it'll look like is... Um, I'd actually like to show you what the page will look like. It'll look like this. Um, you just uh, go ahead and enter your uh, email address, card number, and then if you want, this is $49. If you want the all the procedures with it, just click that button, and then it'll be a total of $98, and you get this whole package. Um, so that's it. This is Ralph Martin signing off. Click on the link below. And then you'll have full email support from me as well. You make it a great day.